and be imperfect, wild ones. It's Bernadette, and I'm here with your Pick a Card Tarot reading for Monday, March 22nd, 2021. Notice the 22. It's a master number. It's an angel number. We're just a couple days after the spring equinox. I hope you had a magical, magical spring equinox, and all great ideas and energies are coming through for new, new projects and new passions and just newness of everything. Um, and it's a... It's a good thing that the master number 22 is with us today because the ruling chakra of today is the root chakra and the uh, ruling planetary energy is the moon energy and it's all about the feels. And believe me, we're going to be talking about some very deeply rooted feels today. And we're going to be talking about synchronicity that will blow your mind because it blew my mind. Uh, and my mind's pretty hard to blow because it's been blown out for a real, real long time. But uh, I just, I, let me just get to it. So... <laughs> you might be wondering what the spirit animal of today is. Well, your spirit animal today happens to be a fella whose nickname is Panda and whose uh, sacred birth name is Michael -la 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 -la, something that I can't pronounce and I don't want to kill it on screen or anywhere. So here's Michael, lovingly known as Panda. Now, he's given me permission to tell his story and to use his photo for today because he and I had an intersection, a, a, an experience together, a, a on Saturday on the spring equinox, <laughs> I've just been like, <laughs> it's just crazy. So on Saturday, um, I, you know, I was tired y'all. I was just tired and it was a spring equinox and I wanted to move energy out and move energy in. And so I was sitting there meditating and all of a sudden the spirit animals, um, came to me and said, Hey, listen, just to let you give you a heads up next week, the theme of the week for the readings is going to be, um, perfection and, and the false, the false belief that we need perfection or have to be perfect. And I was like, what a theme we have themes now. And they were like, yeah, what do you remember last week? We just kept sending you all these white animals, horned animals. It was about the connection to the divine, getting back in your relationship with God or the, all that is or whatever. I was like, well, yeah, but that was just one week. And they were like, they literally shut my mouth. I look like, I look like a duck. I was like, oh, uh -huh. so Apparently we have themes now, y'all. Who knew? I don't know how long it'll last. It may only be this week. It may be for the next year. I don't know. I listen, I'm not the boss. I'm not the boss of me. I just clock in and do what the animal allies tell me and go on about my merry business life is so much easier that way. So I'm sitting here doing my meditation. They tell me about the perfection thing. And I'm like, oh, I gotta work on my Kickstarter page, which I don't, I'm not really groaning about. Um, listen, and I let me do the plug for the Kickstarter. So many of you have been so gracious. Um, the Kickstarter for the new book starts on April 1st, runs through April 30th. Uh, and it is to, well, it's to support you and your learning and growing and getting a deeper relationship with nature and the animal allies and that kind of thing. It's a 700 page book, full color, nine by 11. It's got prayers. It's got intentions. It's got lots of different rituals, how to work more deeply with the animal allies and 300 animals, each having two whole pages a piece. This is not one of those books where they give you three paragraphs that are the same three paragraphs that you can read on the internet. It's not like that. It's no joke. So, um, not that there's anything wrong with those books. They're what I started on. But when I wanted to dig deeper, I needed more, I needed more information. And I was like, ah, I need more. And I couldn't find it. So, and I have a lot of people tell me that. So that's why we've done this book. And I pledged to give um, uh, $5,000 or more of the profits of the book um, to animal, or to, to, well, to animals, but to the charity, animal charities that help prevent cruelty to animals because April is Prevention of Cruelty to Animals Month. Um, I, I'm so deeply committed to that cause, so deeply committed. And I know that you are too. So, um, so back, so back to the, so back to the story. So I, I did this meditation. I was told that, you know, this week we're going to be talking, uh, about, and the animals that are going to come are going to help support us in getting rid of our, or healing our need to be perfect. And then the shame that comes over us when we're not, and, and, and all the fear that then comes into us because, we're afraid that we can't be perfect at something and we don't want to feel shame. So we just never try it anyway. And it just is the biggest prison that you can ever possibly be in. Uh, not the biggest, but it's among the biggest, right? And what do we talk about? What's our mantra? Stay wild. We are the wild ones. So homie, don't play that. We can't be doing that. And so I'm like, okay, I got to work on the Kickstarter page. I got to create on the Kickstarter page. Let me just take a second and read some of the Facebook messages. Poof. A message had popped up from Panda. He was the most recent message. And um, 
in in his message to me was a screenshot that I couldn't see because I was on my phone and it was like this big, but I could see his his note that read read this and I was like, why yes I will panda. So I couldn't read it. I opened it on my computer and y'all, I about fell out of my chair because there sits what you see in front of you now, which is a which is a passage from um, Elizabeth Gilbert's book, which one though I'm not sure. And dig this. Look at it. It's all about perfection. I, you, you can't make this up. And then when I sat and I thought about, well, how does that correlate to, well, maybe Japan is just the messenger. Then I was told, no, go back and reread what you wrote about panda as a spirit, a panda bear as a spirit totem and power animal. And think of how many people just were like, you don't have a panda bear in the ark. I was like, no, I don't have a panda. I'm sorry. There were 149 animals that wanted to be in there. And there, there are 149 different ones, except for there are baby snakes and a big snake and there are kissing owls and a big owl. But other than that, it, it's 149 different animals. And they were like, the, the, the people that, that got the ark were like, we don't care. We need a panda bear. Okay. There's a panda bear in the book, right? Okay. So then I read this passage and, and then I reread my own, what I wrote about my own panda bear, <sighs> the gratitude that overcame me, the feelings that overcame me, y'all, I needed a minute. But what I did not do was take a minute to go do my hair and makeup and do my jewelry and get in some kind of, you know, whatever I'm, I'm in my casual working clothes. Um, and, uh, so just sitting at my computer and you know what? I'm perfect in this moment. I really am perfect in this moment. I've had my morning iced tea. I have you all. I'm I'm as healthy as I can be. I I life life is good. And so why 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 did I need to spend an extra 45 minutes this morning putting on my face paint? Um, you know, when I trust that you all will accept me and love me unconditionally the way that I am. And I know the animal allies do. They don't even care when I have bad breath. But I do have good breath right now, y'all. I did take a shower and brush my teeth. I couldn't go that far and not do that. So I'm going to read this passage from Elizabeth Gilbert. Hopefully you've already been reading it. But I want, you know, I want you to hear it. So Elizabeth Gilbert says, After all this time, after all the practice I've had perfecting what should by now be perfected, I still don't do it anything perfectly right. I'm a perfect example of imperfection, and I'm perfectly fine with that. Perfection is an overrated and impossible goal. In fact, the act of chasing perfection makes perfect imperfect. Perfectionism sucks all the fun out of giving life a whirl. Perfectionism is not a happy road to follow. It is harsh and demanding, full of judgment and fear. Excellence is my goal. I'm on a journey and I plan to enjoy myself, even laugh at myself, my quirks and silly habits, my screw ups and flubs along the way. Adaptable effort Patience and reasonable expectations are my mainstays. Self-acceptance and a love of this glorious mess that I am are the key. After all this time, after all the practice you've had perfecting what should by now be perfected, you still don't do it anything perfectly right either. You, my friends and family, are also perfect examples of imperfection and I'm perfectly fine with the glorious messes that you are too. Embrace the glorious mess that you are. Like I've got goosebumps. I, I my telltale eyes, man. The minute I'm about to tear up or cry, they turn this crazy, like you know, red. And people are like, "You got pink eye." I'm like, "No, I'm about to cry." So, I, I hope that you that you find that quote on the internet. Oh, you know what? We'll put it down here. We'll I'll put it in the comments below. Um, and. I would really encourage you to cut that out and keep it with you at all time. Put it in your wallet, put it in a, in a sacred place, a sacred place in your purse, your wallet, your pot. I don't know. Frame it. Do, I don't know. Do, put it on your altars. Do ritual with it. Do prayer over it. But be the glorious mess that you are. And that is, again, exactly why I showed up to this live with not a look of makeup. I, I don't... The, everything's clean, but nothing else is foofed for, for, for perfection. And some months ago, I know I addressed this uh, in, in a small fashion because I'd gotten an email from someone who said something like, you're, you're a fake, you're a phony, people that work with animals don't, um, aren't dressed perfectly or made up perfectly or something. And I made a joke about it. I was like, well, 
I will take it that you think that I that I show up perfectly because in my mind, I already knew what my embarrassments were and what my insecurities were and what my shames are. I know that, right? And I'm working on it just like you all, like you all are. But the craziness is Panda, um, M Michael, who has given me permission to use his image and tell his story, he is the facilitator of your spirit animal today. So you actually get two panda, you actually get two panda bears today. You get Panda Michael, who you'll probably you might recognize um because he was participatory in the live on Thursday night. Um and just remember you guys, I'm doing lives, uh live live free readings every Tuesday morning from eight to ten and every Thursday evening from seven to nine. Um actually not true. I'm gonna change it up this week. I'm gonna do uh readings from uh eight to nine thirty and then from seven to eight thirty. That that extra out uh, that extra hour. I got to condense it down, you guys, and I'll, I'll, I'll pick up on doing the readings more quickly, but I, I got to condense it down. So, um, so there, their panda was on Facebook telling me I had to read something, not knowing a thing about what had gone on. Well, I say not knowing a thing about what had gone on between me and the spirit animals, but we're also connected. Clearly he caught it psychically and was compelled to share that very quote at that very moment. Right? So panda is a recovering addict and he is, uh, doing God, I'm so proud of him. I hope you guys will join me in honoring his journey and congratulating him and being proud of him for his the, the, the journey that he's on. And he is learning tarot. He is learning all the aspects of metaphysics, his psychic work, his mediumship work. He's starting a, a gem business, a, a, a gem and bead business. Um, he's just doing great. And so I just, I, I just, man, I know when I've been through my darkest times, I, I don't I don't know that I had the wherewithal to show up for anybody else. I could barely show up for myself. And I'm betting you guys can relate to that. I, I know you wild ones have been through some dark nights of the soul. I know it. And it again, it can be really difficult. Well, Panda going through everything he's going through when his focus could be just on him and his healing and his recovery alone. He's out spreading messages to the whole collective. It's just amazing to me. Well, when I when I took back a look at my um at my own at my own description of you know panda bear symbolism and meaning, I I was just so taken at how panda the panda bear could really be so relevant. And here's how this works. So today is the 22nd, and I do understand that in traditional numerology, we'd add the month and we'd add the year and we'd do this and we'd do that. And we'd spin on our heads and get out of, you know, in a Bacchus and all that kind of stuff. And I'm not making fun of you numerologists. I, I'm just poking because I, it's numerology. I still count on my fingers, right? It's nuts. So, um, but the master number 22 is truly a master number. It's the most, it's, it's one of the most powerful numbers out there. And it, it, it speaks of having a very intense an uncanny relationship with the spiritual world. It's the master builder where you can create something out of nothing. And when I read that, when I, I, I reread that, I was like, I, yeah, I remember. Okay. I remember writing that, but I don't remember the feeling that it gave me today, which is you can create something from nothing. And here's what I will tell you. I, I know two people. Um, I know two people very well, very close, very closely. And they're the people that, let's say they were going to, I don't know, write a book. And they, they wrote one or two sentences or paragraphs that they really didn't like and thought they were wrong or not perfect. They would scratch the idea of writing a book. In relationships, when one thing goes south, we're done here because it's not perfect anymore. Now, I know you Virgos out there. And those of you with strong Virgo risings or a lot of Virgo in your charts, I know you can relate. And I, I, my heart goes out to you because uh, my heart goes out to you. That's a lot. That's a lot of pressure to contend with, and that is that is such a very wound tightly way of walking through this world. Woof! My greatest wish for you is to chillax. The other thing that really struck me um, about the number twenty-two is it. When you're earthbound, it takes a lot of adjustment and you may fear failure because the burden is so big. 
because maybe you can't be perfect as a 22 master builder guru kind of person. And you do need supportive people in your life, but because yours is a, is the path of an adept, it's going to be filled with challenges and, and it's going to be filled with shadow life experiences and shadow personal experiences. But you are the man, you are the master manifester. The world, your soul, the universe, everybody else, your sacred contract was to thrust you into the forefront as a sage or an instructor, a great influence. And you, you're being called to step into that to, rem to, to remember that that's a gift. It, 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 it should be celebrated and it's a gift. That said, it's also a call for you to remember that, that 22 is balanced. It's a perfect balance. And that's where Panda Bear comes in. It's a perfect black balance of black and white, the yin and the yang. Now, in perfect balance will come, you know what? I live in Florida. It's God's waiting room. We have more senior citizens here, I think collectively, than anywhere else in the world added up. I know we don't, but it really does seem that way. And I don't live too far from a place called the Villages, Florida, which is which is the national pod for retirees, okay? Like the movie Cocoon, where they were all older. It's like that, but but magnified a billion times. I read for a number of elderly people. Um and I love them that they had the opportunity to, to live that long. I, I just really love that for them. And some of them could give a fig, could give a hoot in H-E double hockey sticks, what they look like, what people think about what they're talking about, so on and so forth. They live, they are wild and free spirits. But the vast majority of them come and they can be 95 years old, but buddy, they are dressed to the nines. Their hair and makeup are done. Um, they, they they care. Now, some of them, I'm sure they just, they like that. Some people just like the dress up, right? I'm a cosplay person. I love cosplay. I love dressing up like animals and acting like animals and, you know, and talking like I've ever been to a cosplay thing in my life. Mostly it's been big Halloween parties, but, um, but I, I would go be mama bear at any old Cosmo, uh, at any old um, cosplay thing because it would be fun. And, um, and so when you take a look at the balance for those of you like me at this moment who have not healed or come to terms with your need to be perfect or as to be seen as perfect and you just, God, your world just spins when you're not perfect at something, you please, I'm going to use Panda Bear to find the balance, the balance between honoring the time that I start to spin because Ah, my hair's not done. My makeup's not done. Oh my God, look at that. I shouldn't have had that sugar. I had, you know, I gained five pounds. Ah, okay. Um, I'm looking at it. Last week I told you guys, I'd literally made a pact with myself and I said, you want to save your own life? Do it and quit sugar. Don't do it. You keep eating the sugar and croak out early and be miserable while you're doing it. Cause you know, it triggers your autoimmune. And, and thank you, by the way, Man, I got a cascade of um, emails and uh, inboxes and whatnot from people who also have autoimmune, who also have sugar sugar addiction issues. And yeah, thank you, man. There was some great information and thank you for the love and the support. But the other thing is when you, when you tap into Panda Bear energy, remember as cute and cuddly as they are, they're bears. They're bears and they can slap get with it just like a grizzly bear can. They don't do it often. They don't really have to, but, but they can. And so you, you can go about this making peace with or getting rid of or healing or whatever, this thing about perfection, what, however this is manifesting in you. You can be ferocious like, like a bear. You can do it peacefully like a panda bear. Um, but, you know, you can, you can work with panda bear to be your power animal so that it can solve your immediate problems with finding peace in yourself, which in essence is a balance. But if you're like me, what's balanced? Like, 
I don't know, what's balanced for me, what feels natural to me, other people have remarked, you, and they, 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 they make the judgment, you work too hard, you're a workaholic. Okay, maybe, but I love what I do, so maybe I'm a creataholic. And maybe I, maybe, maybe that's part of my personal time and I just don't know it yet. Like later today, I'm gonna go clean the windows on my porch because it's pollen season here in Gainesville. And it doesn't, it doesn't snow in Florida, it pollens. And we've got pollen dust like this three inches thick on everything. So that's gonna be personal time. But would I rather be sitting talking to y'all about woo woo metaphysical stuff? You betcha. Um, but still, it's personal time. I think you guys see where I'm going with this. And it's not about me. I, I'm just being told to, to, to use some of these references and some of these stories and some of these examples because, because <laughs> oh, God, I had a reading one time with a gal. <laughs> I'll never forget it. I said, well, the first thing I said, well, how personal can this reading be? Which is what I say to everybody. She said, deeply personal. I said, okay. I said, well, the first thing that's most important um, spirit is bringing to me is that you, you really are uh, a perfectionist. I can't take that. She said, I, I don't receive that. I said, okay, why? And she said, well, you know, I work really hard to be good at what I do. I'm not a perfectionist. <laughs> I said, Okay, I'm, I'm not sure that I, I'm sorry, I'm not following you. Could you explain that a little more clearly or t t tell me like you're talking to a nine-year-old. She said, I work extremely hard to be the best that I can be at everything. And so I'm not a perfectionist. And I said, how do you see, how do you see those as different? And she said, well, if you're a perfectionist, then you, you just, you know, you can't stand it if things aren't perfect. And I said, and exactly how hard do you work to be the best that you can be at everything? And when you're not your version of what you think the best is at whatever task you've undertaken, how do you handle that? She looked down. She said, I'm a perfectionist, aren't I? I said, yes, and you're in good company. So it just, I'm going through all of this because those of you out there, wild ones that are like, that's not me. I hope it's not for the four of you that it's not. But, some, but somewhere, somewhere inside of you is a desire to be the best at something or the per, most perfect at something, probably because it matters so much to you. And that's where the secret is. Unpack why it's so important to you. Is it important to you because it's important to you? Or is it important to you because that's how you were trained to be? That nothing is worth doing unless you can be perfect at it. And if you should fail at something, if you should not meet your mark, if you should not meet your goal, if you should crash and burn, um, do, you have, do you have the bare strength within you to make a comeback? Do you have the wisdom to understand that that crash and burn wasn't nothing but a thang, chicken wang. And if you choose, you'll learn from it. You'll dust yourself off. You'll patch all your boo-boos. And you'll go on to be ferocious once again. You will be the glorious hot mess that you are. And we will all love you for it. Okay, I hope that was helpful. Pick up your copy of the Ark Animal Tarot and Oracle deck. Here's what it looks like. <laughs> Not perfect. I almost clocked myself in the head. Here's what it looks like. Um, subscribe to my YouTube channel. Please go join GatheringOfMystics.com. There is some epic stuff going on over there in the world of spirituality. Totem animals, power animals, crystals, ghosts, just tarot cards. It's all there. And so we want you to be part of it. But as always, what are you going to do? You're going to do good for animals. You're going to be perfect with your imperfection. And you're going to stay wild. Stay wild.